The following presentation is rated Web G for general audiences. Previously on Welcome to the Family. That horse must have been maybe 15, 20 feet tall. I also have a fear of heights. And that wasn't the hard part. He said, quickly, come on. He didn't know if a train was coming by, just like smash into it. It was quite scary. We drove it till it was gone. Houston, we have a problem. Anyone can entertain you, but only we entertain you. With a mixture of fun, learning, and craziness, my team and I travel the world motivating and connecting with people. Are you ready? Welcome to the family. So today we're headed to the George Ranch Historical Park, which actually follows the family lineage that dates back to 1824 and spans a little over 100 years. It really takes you back and it gives you a perspective on how people used to live in the 1800s and I thought that was pretty cool. Now the location itself is huge. Look. <laughs> here with my daughter Sabrina and we're about to do a selfie, ready? On three, one, two, three. <laughs> Don't bite your arm. We got no water, man. Can you do something about that? <laughs> you have 20,000 acres of working ranch. Men raised in a saddle showed us the cowboy way. Cowboys herd, rope, and sort cattle every day. Right there, on top of the head right there is where he likes it. Now back in the old days, the 1800s, the only thing that was out here worth any money was wild cattle and some wild horses, okay? For medication? She only has bottom teeth there. She does not have top teeth. And to prep them for the market. Nice large horns, nice color, okay? You're looking for good meat, nice large shoulders. <laughs> I know. Nice large hips, because that's where all the meat is, shoulders and hips. And you're also looking for good hide. I wouldn't brand them all bunched up tight like this because I'd end up burning the shoulder off this one and the hip off that one, trying to get low on the hip, right? Another interesting part is to get around this huge ranch, the transportation they have there is this huge tractor connected to this, it almost looks like a tram, but it's your ranch tram. They also had, I think, about four or five different mansions from different eras, so you got to see how people's lives shifted during different time periods. One of them was a Greek revival home from the 1850s. If y'all have ever heard the saying, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite, it's actually going to be because of this. This right here is going to be the way that most beds are made. So you have ropes right here that actually will hold up the mattress that you sleep on. Sleep tight reminds the children to actually tighten those ropes up once every few days. There is so much to learn about American history and you really don't have to go out that far to learn it. Start traveling, especially with your family and you'll have some quality time. In fact, we can use one of these to get around. <laughs> then we went to the mansion. Oh God, that one was dreamy. I can see why no flesh photography. This is nice. Everything in there was perfect and it was really posh and beautiful and I mean, I didn't see anything so old and antiquated about it. It's stuff that I would use today. Water is not chlorinated like it is today. So it was easier to get different diseases because they didn't know to boil the water to keep them from getting sick from drinking that water. So what would happen is they would drink the water and then they would get sick and pass away. We actually took Nettie's daughters with us and they had a great time. You remember who Nettie's daughters are, right? If you ever want to go to Texas, I recommend you go there because it makes you feel like you're in Texas and it's a great experience for not only yourself, but the entire family. So off we go to see Mount Carmel Center in Waco, Texas, better known as the Branch Davidians. We are at the site of where David Koresh had his cult in Waco, Texas. So when we got to the compound, there was a little eerie feeling. So we're gonna go check it out, see if we see anybody. It wasn't just knowing the history of what went on there. Everything was real desolate and it seemed very abandoned almost. Hello? No, you're trespassing, right? Yes, we know we're trespassing. Something went down and went wrong that the ATF, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Agency was coming to raid them. They came because it has automatic weapons, supposedly illegal weapons. 
So David Koresh says, we're just protecting our property and we have the right to bear arms. So they attacked the police. When they attacked them, the first four officers got shot down because these guys had serious weapons. And that's when the whole army stuff started. And then they brought in the military. And he's like, look, I'm shot. I'm here with my kids. And you guys can stop any minute now. You don't have to continue doing this. And they kept at it. They burned them down. They killed the, the people. That's like going to a Christian church. I don't like what you're practicing. And you guys have guns for your protection. So let me bring you down. Yeah, but you're not allowed to have automatic weapons without the right permit. Yeah. All these those here mark oh, the, wow. the graves of everybody, including the Indian. Where did he feed it? Yeah, here. Here's David Koresh, here. 2014. These stones originally marked the different bodies that they found, and then they moved them into the monument. So it's very possible they didn't know where he was. This is Koresh. That's Koresh? Yeah. I don't agree with the way the cult was set up. However, I don't think it's right for them to come in and just know. take you down. What did they believe in, though? What was in so God. They were seven-day Adventists. Yeah on the road again, heading towards Lake Murray because we're part of the wedding party. So I've heard about Stephanie and Gary for years, especially from Alex because Stephanie is one of her closest friends. She loves them both. They're awesome people. So I was really excited to meet them. Oh, how cute. Oh, oh no. That's so cute. Look at the sign. What does it say? For smoking hot love. <laughs> little piece of Texas. That's an actual fence from Texas that we painted hey. your name on. How you doing, buddy? Man, you've gotten big. And you have a fireplace, so now in that bag is everything you need to start the fire. Made in a country style. You're going to take one to Gary. All right, got one for Gary. I'm three for Bobby. Three for Bobby. I'm out here in the wilderness delivering some Cuban coffee. I've never seen places like that before. Like the most I've seen is like this little tiny forest that I went muddy with Miles, LJ, my dad and I. Oh, uh, dude, are you bringing me Cuban coffee? All right, Gary. Oh, you are the bomb, baby. You the man. All right, Woo. now be gentle with it. Be gentle. Gentle. Uh, let, it, let it be but gentle you, with you me. Got, caress it. Let, let, your tongue, <laughs> let your tongue caress the flavors. And let your heart capture the energy. Man. I got a little Cuban inside of me that is jumping for joy right now. Well, good morning. We have Cuban coffee. Cuban coffee, okay. Bobby, we got you two cups. It's got tons of sugar in it. So. Okay. Oh, it does. Is it going to put me in a diabetic coma? It, it may. <laughs> it really may. And that's freshly made and authentic. Made by a Cuban. Oh, my God. That is awful. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell it's strong. <laughs> it's strong, yep. Strong. Like anything, you've got to acquire a taste for it. Mm -hmm. Uh uh. <laughs> they drank it, but uh uh. Too strong. Donna had a sip and she's like, no. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder about the sugar. And Gary loved it. In the rehearsal, I had the moves. You had to see me. I felt like I was a part of Dancing with the Stars. Oof. I was ready to rock the house. <laughs> now that's also where I go into a costume change. Uh, or so I go change. Now, you gonna do my fingernails? They might have to, yeah. <laughs> you know, All right, girls, give your first to the guys for a minute. All right, so girls, we're gonna go out on the dock first. Okay. Being part of the bridal party required us to go out onto the dock and take pictures. Are we going to the very end, Sandra? I, I had you envision down there, yeah. And we're walking in this dock that feels like it's gonna fall apart on us in any minute and we're gonna plunge 10 to 15 feet down into ice cold water y'all don't look down oh hey goodness. where do you want me at down here with stephanie i know but man it was horrible she has the worst heels on and her heels are picking through this not to mention we're about 10 feet off of a, p a pier that has no siding but it was fun and i'm sure those pictures are going to be amazing happy anniversary this wedding originally was to be taking place outside, but uh, after m much complaining <laughs> from the bridal party and not knowing what shoes we were going to wear to do this in rough terrain, we decided to take it indoors into this most quaint and beautiful little chapel. We are gathered because of who they are and what Gary and Stephanie have meant to us. 
How do I summarize? 25. Amazing. Wonderful. And sometimes difficult and hard years. Marriage is a choice. Every day for the past 25 years, I've chosen you. Please stand now if you are willing to be there for them. I present to you Gary and Stephanie Applewhite. Appreciation and love. <laughs> and now it's time for the main celebration. Congratulations. was so much fun and we got to see so many of our old friends that we hadn't seen in years and made some new ones that we hope to see for the next coming years. Oklahoma was really fun. There's a lot of people there that like to have fun. <laughs> favorite part of the entire experience of the wedding was actually spending some quality time with old friends and meeting new people. It was just time to hit the open road and head off to Oklahoma City. Welcome to the family. I'm Val. Don't forget to like, comment, and share our video. And subscribe, of course.